This is an NBC News special report. Here's Hallie Jackson. Good day. We are coming on the air with breaking news from the White House, where President Biden is set to speak about that catastrophic bridge collapse in Baltimore. You've probably seen the video by now, a cargo ship slamming into the Francis Scott Key Bridge overnight. You see it there from earlier. We also expect to hear from NTSB investigators soon. This comes as crews are racing to try to find any survivors in a search and rescue mission happening as we speak. It's been nearly 11 hours since the Key Bridge, which is part of I-695, snapped and collapsed into the river below, a scene that seems almost unimaginable, sending people on it into the water. Officials said earlier during a briefing that six people are still unaccounted for, and there you see the moment when that ship hit and the bridge came down. We said catastrophic. That is absolutely what this is. The president has been briefed on this, convening senior members of his team, According to the White House, directing all federal resources be made available to assist in this ongoing, again, very urgent search and rescue mission. We also know that the Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, is on his way in Baltimore now. We've heard already this morning from Maryland Governor Wes Moore calling this not just shocking, but heartbreaking as well. President Biden, again, set to speak from the White House any second on this. As we are waiting for him, let me quickly get to Tom Costello, who is live for us at the base of that bridge in Baltimore. Tom. Hallie, uh, we are hearing still that they're looking for six people in the water, but as you rightly point out, it's been coming up on 11, 12 hours now. The chances of survival in the very cold waters in that river diminish by the hour. In addition, we know now that the, the people on that ship radioed the bridge, that they were losing control of their ship, and as a result, the bridge stopped road traffic up above, thereby preventing further cars from going across the bridge and potentially into the water. The people who are missing, those six people, are thought to be all construction workers who are doing pothole repairs on the bridge at 1.30 uh, in the morning. There were cars also in the water, but the fire department does not believe anybody is in those cars. And so the search continues for these six people. Two people were pulled out, one sent to a local trauma center in very serious condition. The other one uh, denied or, or declined any treatment whatsoever. And now the port of Baltimore, one of the busiest ports in America, is closed. The yeah. airspace has also been closed above it as the police and fire department helicopter and Coast Guard helicopters continue scouring the waters for any signs of survivors. Hallie. We have been playing, Tom, as you've been speaking, that stunning video of the bridge collapse that happened. You see the ship slamming into it. You see the bridge structure itself coming down. And one thing that we've heard again and again in the 11 hours since that this happened, Tom, is that it was in some ways uh, almost a miracle that it didn't happen during a much busier stretch of the day, perhaps during rush hour with some 30,000 commuters in Maryland who use this bridge every yeah. day. Uh, in fact, 30,000 cars. So think about how many people might have been yeah. in those cars, right? I mean, you're absolutely right. If this happened during rush hour in the evening, it could have been absolutely disaster disastrous and a mass casualty uh, event, not to diminish in any way the impact uh, on these families. I think one of the big questions for structural engineers, for the State Department of Transportation, were those pylons that hold up this bridge, were they protected? Was there any structure around them, bricks or any sort of a, a brick uh, or, or a rock structure to protect them? Like we see at big, um, you know, bridges in New York, for example. We don't have the answer to that, but it does seem absolutely baffling to many people here on the ground that a single cargo ship, by the way, headed to Sri Lanka, leaving Baltimore, headed to Sri Lanka, a single cargo ship could lose power, lose the ability to navigate, crash into a pylon and take down one of the most iconic bridges on the East Coast and a critical, critical bridge here in Maryland in suburban Baltimore. We expect to see President Biden speaking any minute on this from the White House. I want to bring in Kelly O'Donnell, who is live for us there. And Kelly, it is always significant when we hear from the commander in chief at a moment like this. It is an important step and the president feels that it is necessary now to talk to Americans about what's happened in Baltimore. 
Very much so. And stop me as needed if you see the president moving into the room from your vantage point, Hallie. But this is an opportunity for the president to synthesize all the information he has been getting today for the American public and to talk about a federal response and to be able to articulate some of the ways that the federal government can provide funding here, included some existing laws that allow for uh, funding to rebuild when there is this kind of collapse and to try to speed resources to Baltimore. And this is where the federal government has a unique uh, role to play, bringing together all of these different agencies that will do the investigation and the rebuilding plan. Of course, when you're talking about this kind and of Kelly, I will, affair, I will stop there you there. The As President the Biden is walking into the room, we're going to listen in. Good afternoon. Before I leave for North Carolina, which I'm going to do in a few minutes, I want to speak briefly about the terrible incident and accident that happened in Baltimore this morning. At about 1.30, container ships struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware to our trainer by car. I've been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people in the vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. And the Coast Guard is leading the response to the port, where representatives from the Federal Highway Administration, the FBI, the Department of Transportation, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Maryland officials in Baltimore Police and Fire are all working together to coordinate an emergency response. Officials at the scene estimate eight people were unaccounted for still, not still, were unaccounted for. That number might change. Two have been rescued, one without injury, one in critical condition. And the search and rescue operation is continuing for all those remaining as we speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the mayor of Baltimore, the county executive, the United, to both the United States senators and the congressman. And my secretary of transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And I mean all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time, we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel, as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic before the bridge was struck, which undoubtedly saved lives. Our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. You just don't know. It's just terrible. We're incredibly grateful for the brave rescuers who immediately rushed to the scene and to the people of Baltimore who want to say, we're with you. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. And like the governor said, you're Maryland tough, you're Baltimore strong, and we're going to get through this together. And I promise we're not leaving. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. And we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year. And we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port. And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, the, well, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. And we're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. 
and I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Not leaving until then. So I just want to say God bless everybody who uh, got everyone harmed this morning and their families. And may God bless the first responders, who many of whom are risking their lives. And uh, I'm going to, the reason I'm not going to take a lot of questions, there's remaining issues that are open that we've got to determine what's going to happen in terms of the, the rescue mission and the like. But I'll. Do you, do you plan to go to Baltimore, sir? And if so, how quickly? I do, and as quickly as I can. That's what we're you said the federal government's also going to pay for the repairs. I'm just curious, this was a ship that appears to be at fault. Is there any reason to believe that the company behind the ship should be held responsible? And then also, you that mentioned. That could be, but we're not going to wait for that happen. We're going to pay for it to get the bridge rebuilt and open. What did you make Mr. of Israel's decision not to attend this meeting this week? Oh, I don't want to get into that. We're going to plenty of time to talk about Rafa. You mentioned the port. Uh, the port. Can I ask about cars? About the port. Thank you, 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 and that was President Biden, you just heard from there, walking out now after taking a couple of brief questions after those remarks on that catastrophic Baltimore Bridge collapse, suggesting that he will visit as soon as he can. And while emphasizing that the focus now is on the search and rescue, looking for those six people still unaccounted for, also casting an eye ahead to what is next as far as rebuilding a bridge that is critical to this country, to this region's infrastructure and economy. Tom Costello is live for us in Baltimore. And Tom, the president emphasizing that the federal government has Maryland's back here. Absolutely. Listen, this is the 11th busiest port in the country. It is a critical port, of course, uh, on the East Coast. It is the biggest port on the East Coast as it relates to moving vehicles uh, coming from abroad into the United States. And with the port closed, you can imagine new vehicle sales may be impacted uh, on the East Coast. But let's underscore what the president said about the heroics demonstrated this morning by the fire and rescue personnel and by the Coast Guard immediately I'm in pitch black because we were here. It was pitch black. Divers were going into the water, a very murky, muddy water and, and terribly cold water searching for any possible victims. We know that they, they did pull two people out. One of them, as I mentioned, went to the hospital. The other one uh, declined any treatment, but they continue to look for six more people. And given the temperature of the water at this point, survivability, according to experts, might really be uh, in question. As for how quickly they can rebuild this, this port and reopen the bridge, Clearly, the priority is reopening the port, and they've got to clear all of that debris from the bridge. That is not going to be an easy task. The depth of the water right there thought to be about 50 feet. So they've got a, they've got a big job ahead of them just to be able to reopen the port. It could take them some time. Tom Costello, thank you. I want to get to our colleague, George Solis, who is also near the bridge. George, you've had a chance to talk with some of the people there, and we can see off in the distance where the bridge used to be. Uh, there are six families right now living an unimaginable nightmare, waiting for any word of their loved ones here. Tell us more. Yeah, that's right, Hallie. And it's one thing to see the image of the collapse. It's another here in broad daylight to see the aftermath. And you can really see it from our vantage point. You can still see the cargo ship there facing the Francis Scott Key Bridge, still partially submerged right now. As you mentioned, there are a number of people wondering where their loved ones are. We've seen a number of people from this location come here looking for answers, looking for information. People who say this is more than just a bridge. This bridge has been around since the 1970s. This is taught in schools. Of course, the name of the bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, named after the author of the Star Spangled Banner. So young and old, this has so much impact beyond just the commerce side of things. People getting emotional here for us this morning as they reminisce about the bridge, telling us they go through it twice, maybe three times a day to get to work. There's workers, obviously, that work here at the port that use that bridge as well. Take a listen to some of the reaction here. Tell me, what did you hear this morning? A boom, just a real loud boom, and then my bed started shaking, and I woke up, seen my grandfather running down the steps, and then my grandmother, and I went back to sleep. I didn't know what was going on, and then I was tired, and then they came back. I, since I was asleep, my grandma woke me up, said, the bridge is gone. I said, what are you talking about? She said, the ship hit it. I said, there's no way. 
you're lying. She said no, and she showed me the video. She showed it to me in slow mood, and it's pretty sad that you could see everything happening. You've seen the sparks. It was crazy. Yeah, Hallie, and again, the focus right now on that search and rescue. Many hoping that those six souls in that water are found. Hallie. George Solis, live for us there in Baltimore. Thank you. We'll bring it back here to Washington with Kelly O'Donnell at the White House. And Kelly, you heard the president allude to the timeline of getting the bridge that we just saw, what's left of it behind George, rebuilt ASAP, calling on Congress to help pay the full cost of that. And in response to a question suggesting that, yes, there should be accountability from the ship's company, but that the federal government can simply get this done more quickly, potentially. Well, there's an urgency because there are so many ways in which this affects the economy and life on the East Coast. And if we just remember back to COVID times when supply chains were affected and all of the ripple effects uh, that were encountered because of that. So put that in the context of this enormous port, this enormous thoroughfare and this connecting point. Although it is in Maryland, it is so much a part of the broader community, and it's obviously very familiar to us who live in the Mid-Atlantic region and have used it so often. So there is an urgency that has economic impact and impact on the economy also has political impact, a way of demonstrating, certainly for this president, uh, an approach to trying to have government work for people. He wants to make that a part of the theme here. And it ties in with his work on infrastructure, the infrastructure law that was bipartisan, and trying to tap into that sentiment that when there are crises and calamities of this scope that affect many people not just those in the immediate environment, uh, that the federal government, more than a state or local, which will have plenty of associated costs, that the federal government needs to bear the burden. Some of the funds for repairs are in existing law. Uh, the catastrophic nature of this collapse suggests that this is a full rebuild, maybe even a reinvention of this important span with modern technology. Hallie? Kelly O'Donnell live for us at the White House. We expect to hear from the NTSB not long from now about their investigation and next steps. I want to bring in former NTSB senior investigator Alan Deal. And Alan, in the minute or so that we have left here, talk us through what those next steps look like, this massive undertaking now for the NTSB. Obviously, they'll be putting together their team, if you will, with the Coast Guard, with the Maritime Administration, the ship's owners, the unions. And they've got to deal with the issue of, first of all, why the engines reportedly failed twice. And then what was the crew coordination between the pilots, which are Baltimore uh, port employees, and the ship's company, the, the ship's uh, personnel. So they've got a big task ahead of them to try to find out why and, more importantly, how to prevent this from happening again. Alan, thank you so much. Tom Casella, let me get some brief final thoughts from you because it is going to be, and it already is, a massive scene where you are in Baltimore and it will continue to be not just for days but yeah. for weeks, perhaps months. I think it's a good point. Listen, the NTSB, as you mentioned, is in charge of this investigation, uh, but the priority at the moment remains on search and rescue or search and recovery. But given the fact that we are right up against I-95, and as you know, this critical uh, highway that spans the East Coast up and down from Maine all the way to Florida, I-95 is going to be seeing increased traffic, especially truck traffic, because of the impact on this bridge here. Uh, trucks are not allowed to go through tunnels around Baltimore. They're supposed to go over this bridge. And so with this bridge out, you can imagine what that will, how that will impact I-95 and all traffic up and down the East Coast. And so if you uh, or someone you know plans to be moving up and down I-95 or in and around the Baltimore area, we could be in for a prolonged period of traffic difficulties, not to mention the fact we've got ships backing up already uh, outside of the port here in Baltimore. They can't get in, so they have had to drop anchor. Tom Costello live for us there in Baltimore. Again, President Biden now addressing the nation, emphasizing that thoughts and prayers are out now to the families of the six people who are still unaccounted for. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.